There. Well. Oh, hi there. I just took an alternate mode of transportation here, but I'm back from my trip to the United Kingdom, folks. That's right, I was in England and Scotland. And I'll try and use some of that information and knowledge in today's review, which was uh, a movie that was shot in England. Although the review itself was shot two weeks ago when I was a very different person. Hello, Brian, of that time. Nonetheless, I'll be alluding to my trip in the coming weeks, and, uh, well, either way, let's not take any more time. Let's talk about this movie. Today's movie is The Fruit Machine Slash Wonderland. I don't know, man. It's summertime. We're right in the middle of it, baby. We're doing it. We're doing big things. Uh, the Fruit Machine from 1988, directed by Philip Seville, also known as, in America, Wonderland, as you can see from this nice little VHS video copy here. The two main characters of the film are Eddie, played by Emil Charles, and Michael, played by Tony Forsyth, although what the actual uh, genre this film falls into isn't easy to say. It's a combination of a few different things such as coming of age thing and both the characters are gay teenage boys so they're coming to grips with that and also there's kind of this like slasher element to it because they in fact end up witnessing a murder and then have to uh, escape this murderer who they saw as witnesses while this was going on. The title of the film, The Fruit Machine, refers to a gay nightclub that the boys take refuge in early on in the film in the middle of the night, and uh, the title Wonderland is in reference to the name of this sort of uh, small um, aquarium, I guess you would call it, just the place where they keep these dolphins who do these kind of shows where they're just flipping around, you know, around in the air and whatnot. There's a lot of weird dolphin elements to this movie, too. The, the kid Eddie keeps having these dreams involving dolphins in a certain way. Also, I should point out that this is a very early instance of Hans Zimmer doing a soundtrack. If you don't know who that is, you should definitely look it up. He's had a humongous presence in making movie soundtracks over the years. And I can definitely get behind, uh, you know, this story about these two teenage boys who are trying to, like, find themselves and find their place in society. Because everyone can identify with that. But what everyone can identify with is this sort of almost, like, tacked-on storyline about this slasher killer. And this character, what was his name, Zed or Echo? Echo. He uh, doesn't ever even speak a line of dialogue, and he's just kind of like sort of, I guess, an intimidating character, but after a while it almost gets a little silly. There was even one scene in particular later in the movie where the plot has been moving along and other characters have been introduced and things are happening so much that you've almost forgotten about this character altogether, and then it just kind of cuts to him in his hotel room like... <gasps> The characters are also pretty interesting because they're somewhat complicated. You've got the character of Eddie who's pretty, uh, somewhat, I guess, innocent and he also acts the more effeminate of the two, supposedly, and, you know, Michael is the more living on the street, gritty, you know, constantly turning favors for old men to get by sort of lifestyle. And also there's this man who keeps appearing in, uh, Eddie's delusions with the dolphins. He appears a few times and then, it, as far as I know, it never really comes up again. It's just like, who, who is that guy? Oh, what if it's Michael in the future? There's also a bit of funny dialogue between the characters thrown in here and there and they use phrases that I wasn't expecting, like fat ass and bitch face. And there's also nice little details going on. For example, when the parents are having a fight over the fact that Eddie has left home on the TV during this fight is a news report about the boys and how they're dangerous. I will say that after a while, so many of the characters, including, you know, Michael or whoever, they're so just driven by sexual depravity and it's hard to know who to root for. It's depressing and it's gritty and dark and everything, but I do kind of just like the style overall anyway. But you know what? Add this movie to your list. You know what? Don't even do that, because it's important. Instead, you should just write 
to somebody and tell them to release it on DVD so that everyone can watch it. But then who knows, because DVDs are probably going to go extinct. Let's get this shit on Netflix. Let's get to, come on! Ugh. Drink a few extra glasses of water today. Stay dehydrated.